I've always believed that elections really do have consequences and you don't necessarily know what those are for some period of time. Um, it's impossible for me to imagine that the style of leadership as well as the nature of some of the positions taken won't have consequences. I, I, I was thinking to myself the other day because somebody kind of challenged my questioning or my point of view on our local congressional race um, and the person is very much a Trump supporter. But I was thinking to myself, take anybody and ask them to select the five institutions that they have the highest regard for. And it could be the church, it could be the museum, it could be Apple Corporation, a company, whatever it is, just pick five. And then put yourself in the position of being one, selecting the next chief executive. And if someone came in to you and gave you a profile that looks like Donald Trump, would you be drawn to that for, the, for an organization you most respect? And, and I think that's what troubles me. I, uh, yes, we, we're, the stock market is doing well, the economy is doing well, employment's good. I don't think any president uh, can really uh, claim full credit for that after less than two years. Uh, I think this has been a building process it's, and it's been slow over time. But yes, things are, are good, but the consequences of the way in which we're addressing issues and dealing with people and dealing with the media, uh, I think we'll pay a price for. I, I'm also, frankly, frustrated with the quality of the Republican leadership in Congress, who I think, uh, especially when the sitting president runs afoul of long-held policy positions that the speaker has held and committee chairman have held, that they should step up and say, we're, we're opposed to that. I mean, it, there's a check and balance that's supposed to be in place. But through almost, I think you have to call it intimidation, they step back. The only ones who step forward and speak of their concerns are the members of Congress who have announced they're retiring. In some ways, this midterm election needs to send a signal to the Republican leadership and the president, who may not receive it, but certainly the Republican leadership, that you can't continue down the path you're on. That people who care about what happens in Washington will find other avenues. And, um, you know, in my view, here in the first district of Maryland, where I now live, Jesse Colvin is an outstanding example of somebody who, um, former Army Ranger, has served his country, intelligent understands the world as it is, not some fictional vision, version of it. Um, a lovely family, wife who was a law enforcement officer uh, and a Republican. Uh, but, but Jesse raises his hand and says to the people of this district, I want to support you. And I support him wholeheartedly knowing that there'll be times when I might disagree with the position he takes, but I think I'm always going to be proud to have him as my representative um, should he win. The Maryland First District is absolutely drawn to support a Republican member of Congress. Um, the incumbent hasn't faced a challenger like Jesse Colvin before, um, young, articulate, experienced, and capable of raising money, and proving pretty good at recruiting a broad base of support among disaffected Republicans and independents. And, and because the party label matters less, I think, generally. Um, I think the election hinges on the ability to absolutely get the Democratic vote out, but then to bring out the, the disaffected Republicans and independents. And that's going to take you know, resources, but he is raising money um, uh, from a broad base of people. It's going to take a lot of energy. He has it. He's been all over the district. Uh, it's still a very tall mountain to climb. Um, for my part, I want to, would like to see him win, but I most of all want to see him do well to again send this message that you can't just bet on people that espouse undying support for the incumbent president and expect that to carry the day. And right now Republicans, many of them, are just intimidated that if you cross this president, uh, somehow he'll campaign against you and um, thus they toe a line even if they don't fully believe it. One thing I'm optimistic about is that you hear from a lot of places that 
people are energized about their participation in the process in ways they haven't been before. Uh, maybe they're upset um, with what you know, they see every day on the news. Um, it would be very disconcerting if the response by people is to simply pull back and disengage because that will keep us on the same path. That does lead to, uh, frankly, governance a government by a small minority. And that would be the worst thing that could happen. So I, I very much hope that people will take the time and ask themselves the question, is the person I'm voting for somebody who yeah. represents my views, who understands my issues, uh, you know, and then go accordingly. Um, and, and if people feel like they can't change things, they'll stay away. But I, I'm, I'm not there yet. I do believe people yeah. can make a difference.